Big trucks. Big drama. Big money. Big crowds. Big show. Ten truck racing weekends in eight European countries run from May to October. That's the European Truck Racing Cup. Grand Prix of Catalonia. The best truck racing pilots have their sights set on a podium finish in the prestigious super truck class. Here they are. The home guy, Antonio Albacete, third overall last year in an MAN truck. Today, behind the wheel of a brand new Caterpillar. Well, the biggest uh, concurrent will be, uh, I think, will be Lustarin. And you know, we have more or less the same, the same uh, trucks, so. He knows very well the, the track, he's been racing with this track many years, so I think he will be one of the favourites for the title and he's going to be a very hard uh, contender. Finland's Harry Luostarinen in his traditional black caterpillar, the most experienced and successful man in the field, European champion in 1997 and 2000. Only what I experienced in this season is to take that number one back. That's my only call. Marcus Bersiger of Switzerland, last year's runner-up overall. Instead of an MAN truck, he's now competing in a Czech Tatra. We finished the truck relatively late, but it's now in good running shape. I hope we'll catch up with Harry by mid-season. Another convert to Tatra trucks. French pilot Alain Ferté, vice champion in 1999. I will expect uh, to, to, to be good first and to win some races for Peter Muller and the sponsor. But I don't know, it, for us it's the first race, the first test, and uh, we have to work, we have to work. Last year, Czech driver Stanislav Matejowski won the European crown in the B-class, abolished this year. The truck is much more sophisticated, and we're learning to drive it. We're a bit behind schedule, and we haven't tested as much as we wanted. We're doing some fine-tuning on the circuit, which is not very good. Another Czech pilot, David Vershetsky. At the age of 26, he has just one racing season to his credit, in the race truck category in 1998. Now he's driving a Bagheera truck. There are guys here who've already won the title, and it's a privilege for me to compete with them. The other Bugira in the competition, driven by Gerd Kerber of Germany, who finished eighth overall last year. We must find uh, the fine tuning to, to can beat, let's say, the biggest congruent, it's Caterpillar with Harry Lusterinen. We need a little bit time, but I, I'm sure that this season will be running much, much better than, than the last season. Introduced in 1994, the super truck category, as any car racing discipline, has been going through constant changes. In technical terms, the class covers trucks with an engine capacity up to 12 liters, a turbo restrictor with a diameter of 71 millimeters, a minimum weight of 4.8 tons, an automatic gearbox, no ABS or ASR, no black smoke, and a speed limit of 160 kilometers per hour. Points are awarded to the best 10 pilots. Twice as many points are given for a cup race than for a qualifying one. Competing on his home turf, Albacete in a red caterpillar managed to run up the highest number of points. Luo Starnin, the hot favorite, did his very best. Still, he finished second in both points races. Versiger in a Tatra came in third in both races. The first place Spaniard and the second place Finn are driving British made trucks. The third place Swiss is in a Czech one. The world is just so wonderfully rich and varied.
the super truck class experienced a mighty shakeup earlier this year. Two classes were merged. Engine performance was limited. The method of checking permitted speed limit was changed. But the main breakthrough came in the overall concept of the series. In the past, the championship was dominated by large car manufacturers. Now, private companies have muscled in, just like in Formula One. While the factory MANs and Mercedes trucks have disappeared from the pack, state-of-the-art technology has been made accessible to anyone who's prepared to fork out a couple of million dollars. Well, give it a thought. Harry Luo started, twice second in Barcelona behind Albacete. He's going to turn the tables on the Spaniard in Misano. Both are driving identical trucks with 12-liter Caterpillar engines with an output of 1,500 horsepower. Both are of the same age. There's a two-week difference between them. Both started their careers in kart racing. Antonio's best result in the European truck racing standing so far was third place overall. Meanwhile, Luo Starnen has a couple of championship titles under his belt. And he proves his worth today as well. Both Tatras of the Deutsche Post World Net team are in for a particularly bad day today. Alain Ferté loses his second position just a lap before the finish of the cup race. His fuel pump failed. Bersiger loses his bronze that seemed to be all but clinched just a second ago in the last but one turn of the race. This opens the way to Kerber, and the patient German pilot wins the first ever cup for Kolbotz's Bugira team. Two evident truths have been illustrated on this shortest circuit in the whole championship series. Luo Starnen in his cat is impossible to beat here, and both the Tatras and Bugiras are clearly improving. This is particularly true of Kerber. After last year's disappointing season, spent mostly in curing the teething troubles of the newly developed Bugira trucks, the winner of as many as 19 Grand Prix can finally get down to serious racing. He can't think about beating the Finnish heavyweight as yet, but two second place finishes, that's definitely a roaring success. French pilot Ferté, number 15, comes in third in both points races at least partially making up for his bad luck streak in Misano. David Vershetsky competed to his heart's content in Austria too. He was knocked about by Albacete, knocked about by Ferté, but worst of all, he was given a hell of a time by Stan Mateowski. But the young Czech driver will get his own back in the next event at Nogaro. The sun-scorched Nogaro saw Luo Starnin's first racing error this season. In a cup race, the Finn fails to withstand Marcus Bersiger's tough pressure. And that's the end of the race for the overall leader. Albacete also shows that both Caterpillars are not in their former scintillating form. The Spaniard is still second overall, but he has not made it to the podium in the past two races. Kerber doesn't make it to the podium either. His Bagheera failed to cross the finish line. Bersiger and Ferté went through the races without any technical hitches at all in France, and both Tatra trucks get a double win. Bersiger in number two is first, Ferté with number 15 is second. Coming home immediately behind them is David Vershetsky's blue Bagheera. It's a fact that Albacete is putting pressure on the Czech rookie in the super truck world. But the youngster gets a podium finish after all. He needed just four races to accomplish that. Somewhere here are the grandstands. The track. And the podium. But this time, nobody sprayed the podium with champagne. After all, nobody can race when visibility is just a couple of meters. For the first time since 1927, car races had to be called off on the renowned Nürburgring due to fog.
perfect weather and the slowest circuit in the series, set in the midst of forests. Average speed here will never exceed 110 kilometers per hour. Still, the track seems to be well suited for knocking David Vershetsky's truck around. There's no way David will be standing on the podium today. But neither will Harry. Alistaro is in fact Luo Starnin's home circuit, but the tight-lipped Finn scored his last win here four years ago. And he won't improve his track record today either. Meanwhile, it's Marcus Bersiger who's set to get full points. Last year's silver medalist had a lot of bad luck earlier in the season, but now he seems to be creating a perfectly functioning unit with his Tatra truck. The only pilot capable of keeping pace with Bersiger is Gerd Kerber. Earlier on, nothing indicated that the 39-year-old German could get a firm place among the absolute top. But today, Kerber is determined to chase Bersiger until the very last moment, until he gets it. 3rd place is left to Alba Seti. Although on his home circuit, Stan Matejowski welcomes the crowds only from billboards, moving around the depot very carefully. His deserted Tatra will be driven by an old truck racing hand, Ludovic IV of France. For me, I'm discovering everything, the team, the truck, the engine. And the engine with the restrictor, it's uh, quite difficult to drive. The range of the, the turbo, it's difficult to drive with it. But uh, after a few sessions, I'm getting better. I think that will be all right. Kerber wins the time practice. Yeah! Yeah! Kerber wins the qualifying race. Kerber is bracing up to attack the championship title. In the end, Kerber is the saddest man on the most circuit. Those opening several hundred meters must have been very bitter for Kerber. The man who dominated the weekend can only look hopelessly on as his competitors dash past him quite easily. But then, you can hardly hope to win a race with a truck running on five cylinders. Alain Ferté in a Tatra is in the lead, ahead of Luo Starni. Kerber's teammate Vershetsky is third. None of their rivals is able to threaten their position, and that is also the final standings. Still, the final podium finish will be different. More bad luck for Ferté. A 10-second penalty for overspeeding, and his win melts away into fifth place. Finally, Luo Starni is first, Alba Seti third, and in between the two cats, David Vershetsky's lifetime achievement thus far, a silver medal. No wonder that his experienced rivals drown him in champagne. This is Gerd Kerber's weekend, and justifiably so. Out of the past 13 timed races, whether free practice, time practice, or qualifying races, Kerber was the fastest on 11 occasions. And now he's finally heading for his trophy in a cup race. The super trucks formed a kind of train, swallowing one lap after another at an average speed of over 123 kilometers per hour. Everyone's waiting for his rival to make a mistake, but nobody is prepared to do that today. Kerber is first, Versiger second, Luo Starn in third. Gerd Kerber has been waiting for this moment to come for an excruciatingly long time. No wonder he's now relishing his victory with a vengeance. Spanish crowd of 100,000 truck racing fans witnesses a triumph of the Czech Bugira team. Its performance hasn't been impeccable, so it's not a win this time. 
Laferte and Atatra gets the maximum points, but the second and third position go to Kerber and Vershetsky, respectively. David faces an uphill task to ward off the black caterpillar. He's doing fine. When everything is settled and calculated, Kerber, the runner-up, is trailing a mere three points behind the overall leader, Luo Starn. For his part, Marcus Bersiger buried his chances for the title for good. The showdown in Lausitz is going to be very dramatic. The final race of the year. Bersiger's leading the pack in his yellow Tatra number two, ahead of Luo Starnin, closely followed by Kerber in a silver Bagheera. Gerd Kerber has to rely on a miracle. After failing in a qualifying race, he's trailing five points behind Luo Starnin. But competing in front of his domestic crowd, he's doing his best to get maximum out of his truck. Kerber succeeds in overtaking Luo Starnin quite early in the race. But Marcus Bersiger is today a much harder nut to crack. With every lap, the German is getting nearer to the Swiss pilot's Tatra truck with an MAN engine. In every lap, Kerber keeps attacking, but Bersiger's racing in a greatly relaxed mood today. He himself no longer stands any chance to win the title, circling around without any pressure or strain. Every mile of the race brings the title closer to Luo Starnin. Quite surprisingly, the Finn has to cope with a terribly tough pressure from his teammate, Alba Setti. It's evident that this runs counter to Caterpillar's teamwork spirit and rules, but the Spaniard has evidently been bitten by the racing bug, attacking mercilessly in every corner. An old maxim says that to win a race, you have to finish it. With four laps to go, the Black Caterpillar gives off smoke. And to everyone's surprise, Luo Starnin is out of the game. His turbo gave up. From then on, Kerber is the overall winner. I think at the moment it's a dream for me and uh, the reality it's comes tomorrow. <laughs> I waiting, I waiting that I not wake up uh, and say oh shit it was only a dream. The black caterpillar stands in the pit lane all alone. No, it was very good so far. We was leading almost all year in the season. But now in the last race we lost that one. But that's racing. It was first turbo what we was plowed this year, and it, of course it was in the wrong time. Albacete is third overall, just as last season. I think the season has been very, very strong in technical level and driver's level. So I'm happy as what the season has is, is, is been. I would like to be more on top, but it's, it's, it's good for us, it's good for us. The Manufacturer's Cup goes to Caterpillar. Well, the season um, didn't finish as well as we expected, but we won the Manufacturers. I've got my drivers second and third. It's been competitive, which is more than Formula One has been this year, and we shall be back next year. And this man, Martin Golotz, former two-time European champion, stands behind the winning Czech Bugira project. It was extremely hard season for us, and uh, we have put amazing effort into, in, into the amount of work we did and since the beginning of the season our performance uh, getting increased race to race and finally the scoring show us the best result.